Hi, I'm Emily Webb, and I'm a spiritual care counselor with Hospice of the East Bay. And I shared with um, Team 2 today, the team I'm a part of, this reflection that I wrote. And I wanted to read it and share it with the HEB community more broadly. When putting my four-year-old to bed last night, he peered into my face and asked, what season comes first? What season, I asked, confused. Yes, he replies, is summer first or winter first or what are the other seasons? Outside his window, sunlight pours in the supposedly thick blackout curtains. It's 7.30 p.m., but outside, it looks as though it could be three in the afternoon. Lately, he and I have been talking about how, even though the days are long and the nights are short, it's still bedtime. The seasons, I explain, as best I can, are summer, fall, winter, and spring. And there's not really a first, second, third, or fourth. They are circular, going around and around, no set beginning or end. But if it were a race, my son asks me, which season would come in first? Which one is the fastest? Among the kids on our block, many who have become constant playmates since their schools closed in March, my child is the youngest. He has quickly learned the pecking order. Who is first reigns. Who is oldest, tallest, fastest, quickest to sneak past the grown-ups get away, gets away with the most trouble. I try again, amused partly by the question and also partly wishing he'd just go to sleep so I can be done for the day. I explain, the seasons just come because of the way the earth rotates around this giant star, the sun. The seasons are an effect of the changing distance we are from the sun, from our orbit around this giant star and the rotation our planet makes as it spins. We don't control it. We cannot speed it up or change it. It's just happening all the time. He presses me, incredulous. Not even with a remote, Mom, a giant remote, or the fast forward button. Not even, I reply. All of this from a kid who wakes up every morning asking what day it is. Since shelter in place, the only difference in his days is on Saturday because we let him watch cartoons first thing in the morning and sleep in. He wakes up every morning asking if it's Saturday yet. What is time anymore anyways? In my favorite musical, Rent, there's a song called Seasons of Love. The lyrics go, 525,600 minutes, 525,000 moments so dear, 525,600 minutes, how do you measure, measure a year? In daylights, in sunsets, in midnights, in cups of coffee, in inches, in miles, in laughter, in strife, in 525,600 minutes, how do you measure a year in the life? I hear the same question when I listen to families talk about their loved ones on hospice care. How do you measure a life? Will mom make it to Thanksgiving this year? Will grandpa live through the weekend to next Monday when the nurse visits again? Will we celebrate our 65th wedding anniversary together? I can answer these questions no better than my own son's questions about when we'll go to a birthday party again or when the science museum will open. I just don't know. He falls asleep, dissatisfied with my answers, clutching a stuffed mountain goat. 
the light just barely disappearing behind the skyline of our neighborhood. I pull myself from his side to write down these words, trying to think of something hopeful to say in a world full of uncertainty and not knowing. I think about the sun, the days which are even now, as we have passed the solstice, getting subtly shorter as the night lengthens. I think about the rains, which are closer today than yesterday. I think about a vaccine, a cure, a political will, the enormous effort needed to support humanity through a global pandemic. All of us closer today than we were yesterday. Closer, even if it is a horizon we cannot yet see. How long will this season last? I don't know. I only know the force of gravity pulls on us all and the force of love presses us on. This is the comfort I reach for when I too look into a darkened sky searching for answers.